Let's get updated on OSBA committee and section news. And is it okay to lie in politics? There's recent case law that just may surprise you. Hello everybody. It's committee and section season here at the OSBA. We have attorneys from all around the state coming to learn and network and talk about their area of the practice. Correspondent John Varian will bring us up to speed. Thanks Todd, I'm here at OSBA headquarters where the fall committee and sections meetings are about to go down. Let's head inside and find out why these committee and sections are so important. I am here with the Director of Bar Services, Copena Yalaman Chile. Copena. Yes, John. Yes, we're putting on the committee and section chairs today. It's the place to be. It is. Now, why is it so important to hold this uh, event? Actually, it's um, what I look at it is it's an opportunity for our members to gather. It's a forum. Um, and they can participate in whatever way they want by phone. We have video conferencing available as well, and a lot of people join us here. So we do what the OSBA does best, which is give them a beautiful space and great food. That's right, and options. You don't even have to be here, but you should be here because the food is great. I'm here with David Hemanowski, the past chair of the Juvenile Law Committee. David, thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Now, for people that are working in juvenile law, why is it important for them to get involved with the OSBA Juvenile Law Committee? Sure. Well, to begin with, you know, resources for juvenile lawyers are limited to begin with. There aren't a lot of uh, committees and activities, uh, not a lot of CLEs that focus specifically on juvenile law. So the Juvenile Law Committee is helpful in that it is one of the few opportunities to sit down with other people who work in this area, either as a portion of the practice or specifically in this area. We get a case law update at every session. We get a legislative update from Todd Book at every session. Uh, and we get an opportunity to sit around with other people, judges, magistrates, people in private practice, people who represent governmental agencies, and talk about issues unique to this area of the law. Hey, we're here with Caitlin Nesselroff, who is attending her very first Young Lawyer Section meeting. I am. So you must be really excited, right? I am. I'm excited to meet other young lawyers who are involved with the Bar Association. So uh, you're, are you a young lawyer yourself? I am. I graduated about three years ago, and I work for the Attorney General. Oh, nice. So how did you get involved with uh, the Young Lawyer Section? How did you first hear about it? Um, I guess I just heard about it because I'm a young lawyer and so we get the emails and there are some other younger attorneys at the office who are involved, um, so I um, just wanted to get more involved in it. I'm excited to actually get to meet the other members in person. So yeah, that's a, definitely a benefit. You're able to come here, network, and meet people face to face. Yeah, that's the nice thing about being in Columbus is the Bar Association is so accessible, it's just down the road. Thanks John for that report. We all know the importance of committees and sections here at the OSBA. In other news, is it okay to lie in a political campaign? Currently, there's an Ohio law banning such false statements. The question is, does that chill free speech? That law was recently challenged in the case of Susan B. Anthony List versus Steve Driehaus. The district court recently found that the subject law was unconstitutional. We took the opportunity to speak with Representative Denise Driehaus sister of former Congressman Driehaus, to learn her take on the court's decision and on false statements in political campaigns. The situation in Cincinnati um, got started when my brother Steve, who was a congressman at the time, uh, voted in favor of the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. And so at that time, there were people that viewed that vote as um, a vote in favor of government-funded abortions. Uh, Steve disagreed with that interpretation of what he had done. But the other side, Susan B. Anthony, wanted to make an issue of it in the campaign in 2010. And so they bought billboards and they said, shame on Driehaus. And they had a big picture of Steve because they were trying to make this point that he had voted for taxpayer funded abortions. Um, he took that to the Elections Commission because he viewed that as deceitful, I mean, you know, a lie. And so the Elections Commission agreed with him and said that is not truthful, you cannot post the billboards. The billboards did not go up. Uh, Susan B. Anthony with some other groups appealed that to the Sixth Circuit. Eventually it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The issue though wasn't about the issue of whether or not that was a uh, false speech, it was about standing. And so the Supreme Court determined that the group had standing in the case. It got kicked back down to the Sixth Circuit. Um, Judge Black now has made a ruling that said that you can um, have deceitful speech in politics. Many of the state's newspapers have editorialized that the district court got the decision right 
and that false statement should be allowed in the political arena. The Ohio Elections Commission is now weighing its options to determine whether it will appeal the decision. They have until the first part of October to make that decision. Until then, we need to stay tuned to see if lying in politics is okay. That's the word on the square. This is Todd Book with On the Books. So uh, because Steve wasn't here, um, I, I had the opportunity to go to the Supreme Court hearing on the issue. Uh, Paul DeMarco, his attorney, and I uh, went to D.C. I took my kids, which I was kind of excited about. Uh, my, my son's a big fan of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And so, uh, but you go into this room, and I'm not an attorney, and so I'm not accustomed to going into a courtroom with that kind of decorum. You go in, it, it's very structured. Um, we were seated. We were unable to stand. I mean, it was really a, a wonderful um interesting experience. The judges were very engaged in this decision. Remember, it was just about standing. It wasn't on the issue itself. And yet the, the conversation amongst the justices was one about the issue. Um, I think they had already decided in some way that they were going to determine that the groups had standing so that the case could continue to be heard. But they were very engaged and very interested in what states were doing. Some states have an elections commission uh, where they determine that some speech is, is not allowed because it's not truthful. Other states don't have that. And I, so I think they were really interested in that. And they were interested in the uh, intersection of free speech and lying in politics. You know, and, and how do we decide that? What is fair? What is right? What is the best thing for our democracy? And I think they were very interested in that question.